hands together for Majesty Pearson.
Come on, give it up for Majesty. Pearson. Receive now the Speaker of the Hour. You ever know where my hero? Everything I wish that I could be. Touch somebody and tell them you're somebody's hero. You are somebody's hero. I could fly higher than a eagle. Oh, my, my. You are the wind beneath my wings. anything and if I did that's what I would have said about him to him for 88 years he lived on this planet <clears throat> 62 as my father and 66 as the father of uh, six children seven if you consider the first child that my mother had by him who was Caroline to whom he referred repeatedly in the last couple of weeks of his life and to whom he had not referred in our presence uh, the years before. We never heard him call her name, but he did say she's beautiful. He kept saying in his last two weeks of his life how beautiful she was and how she looked like my older sister, which made us realize that daddy was transcending and was ex having a transcendent experience and that he was living like between two worlds. And all of us have questions, <coughs> excuse me, about this whole experience we call life, and you've heard me refer to it as a sexually transmitted disease <laughs> that is um, incurable and terminal because we all ultimately go through the experience we call death, but it's not untreatable. We are all in some form of treatment now with the dis-ease or the tension of living on this planet. Everybody in the room those of you watching by way of internet, those who will hear this later, are very aware that you are constantly in the middle of some kind of tension. And uh, you're giving attention to that tension and then creating intention around it or because of it. Uh, letting our father go, and he's been gone since March 21st, which is two days after my birthday. Still sorting through what that means. And his widow, my mother, is here again today. She comes most Sundays. And she's 85, and she was with him for 70 years, 68 as his wife. And so uh, it's like an amputation to a certain extent for her. But it is for all of us as well. But she's out there in the house every day where they lived together for 35 years in that house, not to mention 100 years prior to that in California. So we're going through transition and a kind of transformation. But beyond all of that, which is what I will address myself, that's my assignment today to talk about transcendence, going and living beyond or besides, and maybe in some ways before. Is this the end, this present experience? Was there something before now? Is there something besides now? It, and is there something beyond now? A few minutes, several of you stood in recognition of a transition that had taken place in your life by somebody you knew or somebody you loved. And you have memories of those persons. And some of them, there are hundreds and hundreds whose ashes lay behind us uh, in the garden and others who are in cemeteries all across the planet. Some people uh, are buried in the sea and will never be seen again. That's part of the transitions of life. And, but we like to believe, because we can't prove that there was anything before or that there's anything after this experience. And yet something in our cells, maybe in our soul, in the memory, if our cell has memories, suggests there actually was something before, there is something besides, and there is something beyond this present existence. How many of you have, have, have just sort of fantasized about that? The rest of you probably aren't even here, but it... <laughs> 
You may, you may doubt it until you get to that last mile of the road when you're thinking what will happen. And when you bury somebody or you eulogize somebody or you go to their bedside and you see them dying, we actually saw our dear Madge would, would rub her dad's, her grandfather's feet and put a lotion on him and put chapstick on his lips and lay beside him in bed and hug him and love him and run from school out there as quickly as she could in her car and, and stay a couple of hours and then come back home or go to rehearsal. And she was very, her dad, she was born on, my grandfa on her grandfather's birthday, my dad's birthday, October 29th. Madge was born the same day so they had a sort of a bond between them that was really precious and he was the wind beneath all of our wings my mother was vocal and she sings and she teaches and she preaches and she creates and she and daddy was kind of always in the background but always had a smile on his face he was a transcendent person in himself as most of the people around you or many of the people around you are transcendent why would transcendence which basically means to cross over to another pace or place, or space, or experience, or awareness, why would it be of interest to us? Why is it, why is it the theme? Or of what do you want to go and or live beyond or besides? Is there something you feel you're missing? If you're seeking unconditional love, and yet you probably never completely accurately experience unconditional love in this life, why are you looking for it? How can you miss something you've never had? Even your parents don't give you absolutely unconditional love because there are conditions. I mean, you know they love you, and you know your spouse loves you, and your children love you, and your siblings love you, and it's supposed to be unconditional, but you know there are certain conditions to it where it feels awkward and, and that you don't please them, and for whatever reason, uh, he's making a list, checking it twice, going to find out who's naughty or nice. If you're good, you get a sucker. If you're not, you are a sucker. We stand in line for approval and affirmations by people we love and from people we love, and we wonder, and yet in our soul, we seem to know and or remember that unconditional, complete love actually exists in some realm. Maybe we remember that we experienced it, and we keep reminding ourselves that it's possible, that life or living or existence really is cool and calm and, 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 and wonderful and stable and we're not alone, we're not isolated, we're not alienated, we, we don't really have lack, that's just an illusion. Something in us tells us that it's okay and we know that but we don't believe it and the only way to know it is to transcend your belief system which means to cross over beyond, besides and maybe before it. Something in you knows you're okay. Something in you knows it's okay. Something in you knows everything and everybody is okay and you want to realize that in your life. You know it, but you don't believe it because you've been told or taught otherwise. But your soul or the cells of your being have experienced this incredible oneness. Isn't it interesting that in the in the, in the book of Genesis, uh, it talks about God creating everything and everything that God created was good. And the only thing that was not good was that man should be alone. Loneliness has been the long pain and itch in the soul. I don't want to be alone or I don't want to be only, 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 only or isolated. I can't handle being the only one. I want social and sensual and spiritual and sexual and, and, and psychological and emotional interaction with all that is because I am connected inextricably to everything that is. And when anybody tries to convince me otherwise, I feel assaulted. Our prisons are filled with people who know they're okay, but they don't believe it. Our prisons are filled with people who know they're rich, but because they didn't believe it, they robbed a bank. Talk to me, somebody. There are people walking the streets who are very anxious, and they're trying to have a transcendent experience. They use a drug or a drink or something to escape a reality over which they seem to have no control, so they try to transcend it by getting high. Some of you are still getting over your last night's high. Some of you have to get high to come to church, so you... <laughs> Uh, in religious circles, we call it communion. <laughs> a 
sometimes we want to deaden our senses to a reality that seems to be tyrannical. We're not just human beings looking for spiritual experiences. You may have heard that say. We're spirit having an earthly encounter. We have a body. We have a mind. But we are spirit. We are essence. We are ether. We are other than. Essence is the intrinsic nature or indispensable quality of something. Your intrinsic goodness. When somebody suggests otherwise, you get offended. You know, remember this if you don't remember anything, you know you're good. You essentially know you're God or divine. You know you're awesome and amazing and wonderful. You know that. And even if somebody tells you, you go, oh, I'm, it's, you don't really know me. <laughs> but if they say otherwise, you ain't nothing, you want to slap them. <laughs> your nostrils flare. <laughs> you know, your eyes begin to pat. And you get very defensive because when somebody says that you're anything other than good, it's offensive to you because deep down in your soul, you know you. Even if you didn't do good, you are good. Talk to me, somebody. So we're dealing with this intrinsic quality, this, this knowing, even if, if it's sort of abstract, it, it, it determines a deeper and more accurate character. I know I got this. Say this. I know I've got it. So we're all lonely for the memory of ourselves and of our souls, of some pre-incarnate reality or existence that our soul remembers. You remember being really, really cool. You remember somewhere in your soul that you're in incredibly creative and insightful, even if you flunked every test you've ever taken in school. <laughs> even if your GPA has always been stupid. <laughs> One of my friends said they, when he was first born, this guy's a doctor today, he said when he was born, he, they, they gave him an IQ test when he was little, and the doctor told him a couple more points, he'd be a vegetable. <laughs> Well, he only said that because he knew he was really, really smart, and we knew he was smart. He never flunked a, a ch check. He never showered. He never bathed. He was the funkiest guy on our wing, but he was the smartest guy there at the same time. <laughs> we all knew that. And today he's a medical scientist and a professor. There's something living inside of you that identifies your essence. Now, the scripture talks about uh, you must be born again. The word again in Greek is anothen, where we get the English word another, other ether. Essence. You must be born anew or uh, by an ether consciousness. That's transcendent. When you get into your ether. Now, when I was young, they used to smoke ether or something. I don't know what folks did. Some of you who remember what you did when you were younger. <laughs> oh, but it, before uh, heroin and pot and all that stuff was as popular, people when I was a kid would s sniff glue. Huh? See, would you like to give us a lecture on it? Huh? <laughs> This is Deacon Halford, Halford over here. He knows all about huffing and stuff. <laughs> Glue and, you know, something to, to sort of help you get to another space or another place or another reality, another sensuality, another feel where you are aware and less aware at the same time. You want to, trans means basically to cross. You must be born again. Actually, Nicodemus had come to Jesus and said, according to the scripture, we know you are uh, a, a man sent from God because no one could do these extraordinary things, this transcendent stuff, except God be with him. And the Jesus response to him was, hmm, you must be born again. You must have had some kind of an awakening or you wouldn't have identified me as you just did. You must be transcendent. You, have must, you must have crossed over to another reality about yourself and the larger, pers larger perspective. Ah, we think it was, it was, it was, we think it was Jesus and you got to be born again. No, he said, you must be, hey man. <laughs> Transcend, it means to climb over or climb up. It has to do with ascended thinking, with elevated awareness. You must have climbed and clawed your way up from that lower dimension of consciousness to a higher or measurement of self. Or you wouldn't have recognized that I'm moving and living and being in God and as God. All of us are in our own ways. You've got to be born again. Now, there's a scripture, 1 Corinthians 4, 17 says, for, for our momentary 
light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory that uh, far beyond all comparison. Verse 18. While, now, this is the important verse. While we look not at the things that are seen. Now that's hard to do. While we look not at the things that are obvious, but at the things which are not seen. Things that are inconspicuous or less conspicuous. For the things which are seen, the things which are apparent or which appear, are temporal or temporary. They are impermanent. But the things which are not seen are not obvious. The things that are transcendent are infinite. Means without finish. Unending. Not finite, not finishable, but infinite. All of us, consciously or unconsciously, are in connection with our infinity. We feel infinite. We feel in our souls that it cannot end. It never even began. And therefore, it will not end. It just is. I just am. And when we see wrinkles in our skin, and I'm, I find myself doing this more, and that didn't used to be there. It was a big, strong a Adam's apple. I don't know where it went, but this. All this. I used to watch my grandfather do this. I think he did it subconsciously, but just pull his neck. I'm pulling my neck, and I, I don't like pulling that neck. I, I wish that neck or that skin wasn't there to pull. But I'm seeing more of my father, I see more of my mother, I see this aging process, and yet I feel better about being older. I'm a well-done adult. That's kind of a cool feeling. It's like I'm evolving. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed or intimidated by my white hairs or gray hairs. I earned every one of them. And so I don't have to hide them. I kind of tend them every once in a while and lean them to the left. Sometimes seems a little overwhelming, but <laughs> at the same time, that, that, it, that is actually a trans. I am crossing over to transcend or to climb or to climb over or climb across. It's not really, we think of transferring, uh, uh, transforming as transferring. We're really just transcending. You're climbing through or over something right now. If I was to start with Ron and end up way in the back to the gentleman with the, with the beard almost as gray as mine back there, he, uh, you'd all have a story to tell about something you're climbing or clawing your way through right now. You don't like feeling down. You want to feel up. Some of you came here today because you thought you'd feel a little bit more up than you feel down or fell down. You want the service to be uplifting. You want the music to be uplifting. You want the songs to be uplifting. You want the series or the sermon to be uplifting. You want to feel better about yourself when you leave here. We learn from Angel uh, my Angelo and others that people don't remember always what you say. They remember how you make them feel. When you're talking to your children, you're talking to your spouse or your partner or your business associates or you're talking to your students or your teacher, they'll remember not always what you said, but they will remember how you made them feel. If you elevated their self-awareness, if you made them feel better about themselves, not bitter about themselves, but better about themselves, they'll like you forever. I want to feel better about me. What I mean is I want to experience my best self, not my best bitter self, my better self. Turn to somebody and say, I'm not really bitter, I'm better. <laughs> Do you believe that? When I say infinite, I mean your limitless, endless extent. You're limitless and endless in space, in extent, in size, uh, the impossible to measure part of you, the non-dimensional you, the part that cannot be measured. Your immediate, immeasurable, immortal, immutable self. You believe in that self. You experience that self. You're learning how to express that self and expose that self. It's taken me at least 50 years to reconsider who I am, what I believe, and why I believe it, especially about me. To transcend, to climb higher. When I named our ministries Higher Dimensions in 1977, I remember I called my mother. I just quit working for Oral Roberts. 
I decided that I was going to resign my job as associate evangelist. I'd only been there two years. And um, I said, I told my, I called my mom. I said, Mom, I, I think I'm going to step down. She said, what do you mean step down? I said, well, I, I want to go out on my own and create my own ministry and find myself. And, you know, I was about uh, 22 or something like that, 23 something. She said, are you, you, uh, do you believe that's what God would have you do? I said, yes, ma'am, I really believe. Are you following the, did you pray about it? Did you fast about it? I said, yes, I did all that. I believe that I'm, that I'm supposed to step down. She said, well, then, son, you're not stepping down. You're stepping up. If you're following your spirit, if you're following your soul, if you're following yourself, if you're listening to your, to your essence talking to you. I walked away and all the millionaire friends that I had when I was associated with Oral Roberts dropped me. One man picked me up in a Cadillac and said, you can, you, I'm, he said, I'm going to be the next Catherine Cooman. I'm going to be the next great healing ministry. He offered me money and he, he drove me around his Cadillac and he said, when I get through, I'm going to pray with you and pray for you. But I want you to come to work for me. And I said, well, I've always only worked for Oral and I, I, I will work for him. And I, he said, well, I'll give you, he said, like $3,000 a month if you just lead singing for me. And I thought that was a compromise. And that was a dumb thought, but at the same time, because I had no money, I had no income, no source of income. I had quit my job. I was only making about 15000 a year, but that was, that was 3000 more than the 12000 I had started with. This was back in 1977. I chose the, I, I didn't even know when he asked me what should I be paid, I, I, I think I called my mom or dad or somebody. I said, 12000 in 1977 seemed like a good amount of money. Now, that's barely a month to live on these days, but it's like it was a, a lot of money. And then I had gotten three or four raises because my checks went automatically in my account. But I left that, and I, I actually transcended the limits of my office at ORA. I transcended the limits of my personal assessment as being the associate evangelist of Oral Roberts, who was my mentor at that time, and sometimes my tormentor. I loved him. And I remember I walked away from that job, and this man offered me 3000 right then, and something in me felt it would be compromising, and I had to transcend the definition of money and think more about impact than income. That did not seem like a smart decision to make at that time. They're tearing, they're tearing down the, the, the building that I used in those days. It's right off of um, 51st and Lewis. That if you, it's, it used to be called the 2100 building. If you drive past it, you'll see that they're, they're, it's condemned and they've got it all, all boarded up. But that was my first office and the rent was $160 a month. And I went on a three-day fast. I stopped eating for three days, so God, believing God to have $160 a month. <laughs> I rented the office. I got a, a, a desk and, 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 and a typewriter in those days. We had type, nothing to type, nothing to file, <laughs> no friends. Just the desk. I went to, to work every day in a three-piece suit or, or a suit and tie. Uh, my fro was leaning a little bit to the left and leaning a little bit to the right. I was curling it and working on it. I, was, I had all these dreams that I would transcend the ghettos in which I was reared. I would cran, transcend the, the small mentality. I would access my larger self. I always believed in me. I believed in the part of me that I had not experienced, but the part of me that I remembered. I had to, to battle between what I believed and what I knew. I knew I could be more than what the limits of my humanity said. So transcendence is going beyond. The modern translation is transcendence comes from the Latin word trans, which means uh, uh, beyond. And the word scandere, scandare or scan. To, to climb, to climb beyond. When you achieve transcendence, you have gone beyond and above ordinary limitations. The word's often used to describe a spiritual religious state and or a condition of moving beyond physical needs and physical realities. $3,000 would have limited me to my physical needs. And at that particular time in my life, as much as I needed $3,000 a month, I need $3,000 a month to date. <laughs> How many of you could use an extra $3,000 a month? Now, you wouldn't turn it down. So for me as a young guy in my 20s to say no to $3,000, you know, when I, got, when I said no to that gentleman, he took me back to my office, dropped me off. I never heard from him since, never prayed with me, never prayed for me, didn't even give me $100. And he was a millionaire. 
And if I named him, some of you would know him. I, I knew what I was walking away from. That wasn't about him. It was about me transcending. The only thing at that time was I had quit my job and had no income. It would have seemed to have been a miracle bringing it right back to me. And it didn't. And I got to the place where I could build a major multi-million dollar ministry. The same faith it took for me to believe for $160 a month to pay my first rent, I later believed for a payroll of $100,000 a month. That was, that's, that's what it, at the peak of my ministry, when we had the largest staff in church, that's the kind of payroll I was paying then. I was taking care of a lot of families. Today, ain't nobody on my payroll. <laughs> Not even me. <laughs> I, but I, I proved to myself I could do this. Now wrap your arms around yourself and say that I can do this. I can climb to, through, and above where I am. Say it. What's hindering you psychologically or emotionally? Your family, a relationship, your financial need or lack, your sense of your lack of connectedness, how are you limiting or talking yourself out of your destiny based on what you believe about you? As I ask you many times, what do you believe about you? And why do you believe that about you? And how do those beliefs about you add to or subtract from the quality of your life? Every day I ask myself again, Barbara, what do I believe about Carlton Pearson? And why do I believe that about Carlton Pearson? Because life starts and stops with how you experience yourself. Not how other people experience you. How you experience you. And then minute we'll go get a sandwich or a bowl of soup or something. Majesty has to go to her, her uh, baccalaureate. A 95-year-old man that we just spoke to a couple of days ago made his transition the next day, I leaned up to him and his eyes were open but he didn't seem to respond and I leaned to his ear and I said, you're gonna go, his name is Herschel, I said, you're gonna go see your grandmother. Imagine your grandmother and your mom. Imagine Shoto where you were reared, born and reared and what the house looked like and imagine them waiting for you because this guy was afraid to die because he thought his sins were too many. How many millions of people go through that on their deathbed? I said, they're all waiting for you. Can't you see them? And the tears start coming out of his eyes. He closed his eyes. And then the other side, I said, we release you. We, we will take care of your wife. We call her Mother Joyce. Don't worry about her. We're going to go view his remains in a little bit. And then be at his service tomorrow. But he transitioned the next night they called us and said he made his transition. She actually texted Gina and said her soul is gone. But we were there around his bed. And we went, rushed over to the house to see him and see her and talk with him. The children were coming in. And I thought about transcendence and transition and transformation, making the change, managing the change, and then mastering the change. Eternal source, God, our father and our mother, our parent, our, our authentic self. Thank you for the clarity and verity and certainty that is our transcendent experience. Thank you for the enunciation of truth within our spirits and for the, for the clear perception of self that evolves into high definition. Thank you for resolution. Thank you for 2020 vision of spirit, soul, and mind. Thank you that we can actually climb to another level of self-expression, self-experience, self-exposure. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Your determinations for the ultimate reality that is good and that is all God. We honor that reality and that fantasy, if you will, great God. In the name and nature of all that is right and true and real and honest and accurate and integrous. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.